Peace, Cosmic Family. I imagine your water has been treating you well since I last spoke to you. Today, I want to take you on a personal journey, again through the world of a god shaman and some of the secrets that must be kept. In fact, let me say, must be kept or really it should be guarded correctly. Some of the information that I'm going to divulge today made me feel like a monster, or better yet, a superhero psychic. So, following in the footsteps of some of the other shaman who've come before me, let's take some libation. But I will be talking for security reasons. I will be omitting some of the names of people involved in this special moment in my life. I'm going to be talking about a moment when I realized that my kundalini was so excited to a point I could expel it from my body intentionally, similar to what Reiki healers do. Tequila. Tequila! Now, I'll tell you this much to get this story started. I had just been through one of the most traumatic years of my adult life, and on the same note, I was gifted thank God, with an angel in the physical form who recognized what I might have been going through and appreciated, I appreciated that balancing force. To recap some of the things I've done in the past two years that led up to 2012, what were miraculous and terrifying at the same time. One incident involved a psychic assassination attempt where literally I saw a human being taken over by one of those who've passed away and is still with us. And their spirit is a ghost entering other people, causing for fear and, and anxiousness. And they decided to torture me all across Long Beach, chasing me. But when I finally stopped running away, I was able to stop it. So the most amazing thing I'll say there is that having fear is dangerous. Having no fear, excuse me, is dangerous. Take it back to like some of the great leaders that we've lost through assassinations when their lives were cut short before they could complete their lifetime work. That scared the shit out of me, but I had no fear. Another thing I was going through was personally, I couldn't find work in my computer field of animating, making video games, where I was used to making six-figure salaries easily. It caused me to have to figure out a different hustle and supplement my need for my DJ equipment. Now at the time, I guess my resume was old looking and I was being passed over. But these struggles compounded and I didn't want to end up homeless for the second time in my life, which had just happened the year prior. But lo and behold, a brother who used to live below me in my apartment in Long Beach saw I was a potentially great DJ and asked me would I love to teach him some of the new techniques that were coming out on the new equipment. I said, sure. So we started a plot to become the greatest DJs. Now let's jump right into the story that ends at 2012, coming out of an amazing experience that traumatized me in Long Beach. I had now moved to Orange County with that new buddy, and his name was Antonio Maurice Salone. Antonio was an old school DJ at the time, and I was a new school DJ with all the new equipment, you know, learning all the new techniques and making up shit. So by December 2012, we had come up with a mission and take my We Shine Music Theory, which was my Play Play record label at the time, and kind of rebrand it as a DJ company for weddings, parties, special events, and you know, shit like that. We also offer services um, to build your party, you know, far as like decorations and a diorama. Now, based on these circumstances, we'd build you a diorama that would match your, you know, event, be it a wedding, uh, a birthday, bar mitzvah, whatever you're going through. We could figure out something to deliver a nice atmospherical diorama that people would enjoy. And that was going to be our marketing scheme as DJs. So, well, also during this time, unbeknownst to any of my close compadres, I was dealing with this female celebrity 
was also seeking reprise from her tortures of a cheating companion. I renamed this person Firefly and as a means of being able to magically conjure up their love whenever I needed. Is that selfish? No. Now Firefly is a very popular celebrity. So popular that, popular that the entire world will be watching Firefly perform live very soon. I began a shamanistic technique where pools of energy form around me. And it was a 30-day meditation where during the time, my buddy Antonio also needed a new name. So while I had this ancient energy all around me, helping me pull in very crazy you know, stuff in my brain, in my third eye, I said, you know, the name DJ Grimm is kind of sad sounding. Why don't we go with DJ Rod Daya? That's your new Christmas name. You do di dioramas, why don't we name you DJ Rod Daya? Which in my world meant radiance of the day. But I was borrowing from the fact that a passion for making dioramas was just coming into realization for him. And so were some of the comedic principles that I already had overstood. During this time of me pulling in an abundance of excess energy in my crown, I began to say, hey, I need to find some more personal techniques. So I went and I sat in the water, imagining that every single molecule of water as it hit my skin turned into a bright blue light or a very violet light, high vibrating, high vibrating colors. And then I'd also imagine that through the principle that water can transfer information faster than the speed of light and all of the cosmos comes down into my skin. It's very powerful. Imagination visual enables my kundalini to collect not only what's inside of me, but also on the dermis akin to what's like static electricity when you find a balloon pulls up the hairs on your arm. Yeah, that's what the water was doing. Well, I've never tapped into this much energy in my adult life. In fact, I knew how to do this. Knowing how to do this boggled my fucking mind. It just came through like some kind of transformation I'd gone through all of this year. And all of a sudden, a lot of ancient information was being connected to me via like a Bluetooth center to the sun. Now, to an average person, that would sound amazing. Yet to a shaman, it was perplexing. And being totally 100 with you, fam, with you, I'm being totally honest with you. I don't dabble in tarot cards, dark magic, anything of that nature. All of my life. I was just moving in a direction that my grandfather and uncle had put me on as a young martial artist. Back at the, this time, I also kind of remembered some deep training downloads into me from talks I'd had with others who com communicated with me through the water about a prior year ago. So during this process, one night in December, one of the ancients said to me in the water that I was pulling in and holding on to way too much solar energy and that this would cause me to either release it in an unintentional way or I would have to reconstitute it, reconstitute it, that's the tequila, into some kind of art form. And now I usually flow and follow good advice. But at this point, I was kind of stubborn chasing Firefly in Los Angeles. And I mean, I'll call it for what it was. I was drunk in love. So with my ego in the way, I proceeded to harbor too much energy. Way too much. In fact, I wanted to create something that was similar to what happened in the movie Akira. Go watch that if you've never seen it. I wanted my chi to expand in this beautiful light bubble across the entire planet during her performance. Real talk. Yet, as I made it through the holiday season of Christmas, Hanukkah, you know, Kwanzaa, Christmas Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. I began to go a little crazy. So never harbor that much energy. I had a powerful night after New Year's in 2013 where I had visions of checkerboard patterns 
on walls and ceilings and objects all around me. It freaked me out. It was at this point that I said to myself, I don't want to damage myself. So I went on a walk through the apartment complex. Excuse me, you saw the tequila. This day. And now the apartment complex has beautiful fountains arranged in different areas, in different courtyards spread out, you know, and I began to take pictures of these different fountains. Some of my favorite fountains that I reach, I told myself, release this energy, this excess energy into the water in every stop that you make at a fountain. I would basically dip my finger into the fountain and say dab. I did this at about six fountains before I found an amazing open courtyard with this huge tree. And the tree was the most noisy flock of gaggle, I mean of crows, I said gaggle, it's a flock of crows. And what I would consider a spout of anger, I said to these birds, quiet down, because they were loud as shit. But in that moment, I took my hand in the shape of a gun and I pointed it at the tree and pulled an imaginary trigger. And my whole body began to tingle. I watched a single bird fall from the tree and he fell to the ground in such a way like he had been struck by something. Now me, as I was a little excited but also a little scared, this was the warning I was given. And I walked over to the crow <laughs> to inspect to make sure I had done no damage. She sort of hobbled over to me and I used my hand to put the crow back on its feet. Then I began to pet the crow and apologize. I said, I wanna give you a verbal apology. I am so sorry, crow, for shooting you out of a tree. I did not know. And the crow literally in, in a vibratorial state said, no problem. And at that moment I picked it up and I th threw it into the air and it flew right back into the tree. Into the tree. I had taken pictures of this thing though. So, I mean, you know, in my mind, this is like, I need to document this thing, you know, on my IG page, on Twitter, and anywhere else that I could get out this information. I, and I literally promised myself I'd never do that again. Now, Firefly's reaction was funny, to say the least, as she would post on IG. And I told DJ Radaya about that, but he didn't really believe me. In fact, he probably said I was a little 5150 at the time. But I assured him all was well and that the moment was ab about to be revealed by Firefly. I'd be able to explain this better to him once she revealed some things. Unfortunately, Firefly and I never got to reveal these things and I lost the proof except for the stuff that was in my IG account. But by the confidence that was exploding in me at this time, I was very, very ready to march forward. I actually knew if I wanted to destroy something now that was very big, I could. I'd reached a powerful dream of what I'd seen in Japanese anime. All that was next for me to prove was that I could do it again without the circumstances of like anger and hurt revolving around that. I mean, almost everybody who's seen the movie The Last Dragon can relate to when Bruce Leroy in desperation achieves the glow. Well, that's kind of what I just I had just done. Now I just wanted to learn how to turn it on and off at will. But I was literally in the same day told through the water, this power is only meant to protect. It's not meant to be tapped into for no reason or for selfish gain. So thinking about this years later, I've learned this lesson. I hope the next powerful shaman that comes out of my loins will learn this lesson without having to cause major damage. But Akira has been here since 2012. So dab on, my friends, dab on.